Hey all, here are OS Reviews. About this time last year, we did a video on a self-driving car kit which uses the Arduino Uno microcontroller. You can push code over and allows it to drive itself, follow a line, it has different sensors for detecting obstacles, and it was a great way to get introduced to programming. With that being said, if you guys recall, this project is not quite as straightforward or simple as I kind of wished it was, especially for kids, because it actually requires soldering with an iron, it also requires kind of a complicated assembly process, and the code that the Arduino is using is not quite as simple as, say, BYOB. Well, today we're taking a look at a version that has essentially simplified the process and is now designed to be a lot more user-friendly from the setup perspective, but still give you very similar functionality from the robot's perspective perspective, such as having the ability to follow a line, having different obstacle avoidance functions, and all the similar sensors. Um, it's also a lot smaller now. The reason why it's able to achieve this is because it's using a different microcontroller chip. So there are basically two chips which are really famous uh, for DIY projects. There's the Arduino Uno, and then there's the Raspberry Pi. And now the product today we're taking a look at called the High Wonder Qubit is using a uh, chip that's called the Microbit from BBC. So yes, that's the British broadcasting company that produces uh, TV content. They've actually sponsored uh, and collaborated with other companies to produce a, a third alternative basically to Arduino and Raspberry Pi uh, that's designed more for kids and those learning programming for the first time. It's also a bit fancier than the Arduino in the sense that it has built-in Bluetooth, which the Arduino does not have, and required us to have a separate Bluetooth chip to be plugged in just to have that function to control it with their phone. This is built right on in. Now the only downside is the instruction guide is completely written in Chinese. So I think that if they uh, want to market this more for international use, they definitely should include a English user manual instead. You can use Google Translate on your phone to kind of scan it and translate it, but it's still a little tedious. Uh, but anyways, there is a QR code that you can scan to download the companion app uh, for connecting it using Bluetooth on your phone. Now down here we have the ultrasonic sensor, which uh, looks like the eyes of the robot, pretty cute, that detects if it's getting too close to an object and then it will just pivot and move away. Here we have additional kind of connectors along with LED lights, it says high wonder on it. Here we have a micro USB cable for connecting the micro bit to your computer for compiling and then pushing the code over. We have a screwdriver for just installing everything quickly. Here we have some ribbon cables and we also have a rechargeable battery here, which is simply using uh, what looks like a double A standard pack. And afterwards, you can even recharge the battery using a standard micro USB port. So here we have a dedicated power on off switch and just the wheels. So lots of it is already self-assembled. We have the aforementioned screws here for tightening things. And then down below here is where we have the micro bit microcontroller along with the manuals for it. It says ready, set, go, BBC micro bit. And the micro bit also has a compass along with a accelerometer on it. So you can actually tilt it to use it for motion-based gaming. And there's also a play chase the dot, uh, very similar to say Snake on a Nokia phone that you can play on it directly because there are buttons on the front Front of the board. So if we take a quick look at the micro bit over here, we can see that this is what the board looks like. We have the, the aforementioned A and B buttons, which you can actually press to do different commands. And this is the display, which is basically an array of tiny LEDs, uh, five by five, as you can see there, so 25 pixels. And uh, the top here just has the micro USB port just to connect it to power, which it needs, and then some of the connectors, which you can plug in for data to pass through, uh, for example, controlling the wheels and other accessories for robot toys. But if we we turn it around, we can see micro bit. It has a processor, it has a compass, it has the accelerometer, and this is a USB. It has a Bluetooth antenna, the battery goes there. There's a size comparison with the aforementioned Arduino Uno, and you can see that the size difference is very noticeable. This one here is tiny by comparison, it fits in the palm of your hands. And with the Arduino, it's a more complicated setup. We need a external display because there is no built-in LED array, and you need to wire everything together piece by piece, including adding modules like Bluetooth, uh, which are built right into the micro bit. So as a result, we need a much larger PCB board, as you can see, and this assembly process, as we talked about previously, took about an hour or two to complete versus just two minutes. The biggest difference is the Qubit is a self-balancing robot because it only has two wheels and the weight is not distributed properly such that if the robot is turned off, it will simply fall over, um, as you can see there. So when it's turned on, it has an algorithm that detects its weight and then moves a little bit to adjust itself to stand upright. The interesting thing though is that this self-balancing algorithm is not something that they require you to actually write or control using the micro bit. 
Instead, it seems to be built into the bottom uh, PCB board here that they've already done by the manufacturer, so you really don't need to worry about that component. So even if I remove the micro bit, which can be thought of as the brains of the, of the robot, the computer, it will still be able to balance itself when turned on. And if we simply set it down here, you can see that it now just tries to stand upright by balancing itself ever so slightly, moving back and forwards. But on the other hand, if you are a more experienced learner or someone who wants to really understand the nitty gritty of how everything is you know, actually working, that is a potential weakness because they don't really tell you how it works inside of the user manual and you can't really see that part of the code. The good news is the microbit controller is very versatile and they give you lots of small codes to try out and experiment with, adding additional functions to the robot. From the user manual and also through email, you'll receive a link to Dropbox where they have placed some of the sample code, including a digital e-version of the user manual, which is in full English. From here, you're able to see you know, how everything is structured, including how to uh, see the various parts included in the box, how to install it. They will also give you step-by-step -step instructions in addition to a YouTube video that will uh, show you visually how to put everything together. The code folder and the PPT instruction folder should be used in conjunction. That is, if you open up code, you'll see where all the various pieces of code are contained for different functions, like this one here is for Bluetooth control. And just like the Arduino, the interesting thing here is it can only remember one piece of code at a time, uh, or one program. So if I want to kind of push over you know, code 24, which is using it as a, a vibration alarm, it will forget all of the previous codes that I've pushed over. So it needs to recompile every time you want to try out a different function. Of course, just looking at the names uh, alone is a little hard to recognize what they actually do. So for example, if I open up a folder, all it does is com contain the code itself, which is in a .hex file format that only works with the, again, micro bit. And that's why I talked about having the separate folder here for PPT presentation, because this one here corresponds to more detail of what the codes are doing. So it is very well organized and easy to follow along. Pushing code over to the board is extremely simple. Say I'm interested in this one, which is for the infrared remote control feature, again, as one gameplay mode, I can simply right click on this particular piece of code and then send to, and then click on the micro bit. And from here, it's simply gonna send that code over. Once it reaches 100%, I can unplug it from my computer and the code will be working. It's basically compiled on the board. If you want to dive deeper and figure out what the code is doing, you have many options. There are even online editions of the Microbit IDE, which allow you to edit code directly without even installing anything. It's simply python.microbit.org, and from here you're simply able to type out any Python code you want to. You can download it, and you can also save it, and push it over directly to your connected board. Uh, but if you want to install a software locally on your machine, you can also do that, and uh, you can find that directly from Microbit's uh, website here, and they tell you how to get started, the features, and how to download the offline IDE. So if you're not connected to internet, you can still edit your code. I've already done that, so in my case, I can simply tap on the code file, and it will open up using the make code for Microbit IDE software that's installed on my PC, and it just takes a few minutes to do so. This IDE, as we can see here, has been designed in conjunction with Microsoft, and uh, in terms of programming languages, it supports the kind of drag and drop blocks. It also supports JavaScript. Uh, you saw how using the online version, we could also use Python in addition to use C. So in our example, we just pushed over the remote control app. So basically the program right now will allow us to use this remote, so I can just tap on the keys here, and as long as I'm pointing directly at the robot, I'm able to control its movement, like going backwards there and going front, as you can see there. There's a little bit of a delay, so it's not quite as precise in its navigation as, say, the uh, four-wheel drive Arduino project car that we did, just because in order to balance itself, it still needs to move a little bit just as a resting state. Um, so that's why the movement may seem a little bit more jerky, but certainly you can do things like control its uh, forwards and backwards direction, as you can see there, and as long as you're pointing directly at the robot, it will recognize it. I can also turn it to a certain direction, as you can see there. Turning action is pretty fast. Uh, the wheels themselves can climb over hard surfaces pretty well. 
And now we can use a phone or tablet to control it. It's simply using the Qubit application, the file I showed you guys on the Dropbox that they provide you with, or you can find it in the Play Store directly. Now you'll also notice I have another app installed on my tablet called Microbit, and that's simply another way of pushing code over to the Microbit uh, controller. Uh, this one here developed in conjunction with Samsung and Microsoft. Uh, so because again, the board itself has Bluetooth, you can technically push code or compile code wirelessly as well. So you would simply be connecting it using Bluetooth and then sending the code that way as opposed to using the micro USB cable and plugging it into your computer. So there's really two ways of trying to send files over, which is pretty cool. So anyways, going back now to just the Qubit app, which is a remote control app. So here we see that we need to connect it first by tapping on Bluetooth. Once connected, features that we can see include the battery remaining. So right now it has a pretty full battery. Uh, we're also able to see the ultrasonic distance, so the proximity from something nearby. Now it also will tell us the light intensity. So there's a light sensor on board, as well as the temperature internally on the board. We can also do things like change the color of the LED lights. Uh, so we have a rainbow wheel to select from. Right now it's purple. And I can also change it to, say, red. I can also switch it over to yellow, to green, to blue. All the options that you could possibly want, you can control. You can also set a random light, which will allow it to basically strobe back and forth by itself. It's very uh, bright and energy efficient and makes a robot really fun to play with in the dark. Now here we have the LED display basically activated, and how I did that was tapping on the horn key on the app. Now this chip does not include a built-in speaker, nor does the components of the robot itself include an external speaker, so it can't actually play sound or music in our case. But I guess the horn will just activate the center uh, board and give us kind of a face, uh, so that's what the uh, function right now is doing. Finally, we can control the motion of the robot using the joystick on the left. So if we try moving it uh, towards the side here, you can see it is indeed moving along, and I think it works equally as well as really the remote control for these types of motions. The final mode through the app, which is kind of cool, is giving you a gravity control. That's basically using the motion detectors on your phone or tablet, the accelerometers, to take place of the joystick that you have to move yourself using your hands. So for example, if I turn this on, you can see tilting the tablet here will turn it this way versus this way will activate the joystick in a different direction. So you can kind of tilt around to interact with your robot and move it with your motion. So here's showing some of the other modes, the pieces of code that you can push over as a quick demo reel. So you can see we can change the, the display if we want it to. We can have it act as a carrying bag by using Lego pieces to add extension arms to it. You can use your own pieces for that. You can also allow it to you know, give you little small objects, control it for mini games, things like that. And because it has an accelerometer, it can detect vibrations and movement. You can create your own games and apps. You can also use it to, again, try out the ones they've included here, including ones which can change the color of the LEDs by using the light sensor on board to match the environment. Returning to the IDE application that you can download, the make code for Microbit, there's also a homepage that I, I forgot to mention previously that you can actually see other projects that the community is building and you can follow along. You can learn more about the various parts uh, the, of your device, such as you know, how the accelerometer works, how the light meter works, things like that. And you can also learn uh, how to program. There's even courses on here for CS online, different types of experiments. So it really is catered towards kids and gives you thousands and thousands of applications beyond than just what the QBot robot kit includes. So you can just use the chip itself and do a lot more of other experimentation with. So here's an example that uh, I use through one of their tutorials. And let's just try kind of pushing that over. I can just tap on download and afterwards it's going to come over to the board. This particular code, if I'm tapping on one of the keys, here it's going to create a happy face. This one here will create a sad face, and tapping the two buttons together should create a different expression, a neutral face. Here's that dice, which simulates a random number between 1 and 6. So as you can see here on the gesture of shaking, it will show a number that is randomly selected from 0 to 6. And uh, if we try that right now, you can see it's selected 0, once again at 2, once again, another two, another zero, another one. So it just uh, does this and replaces the need for a real dice. 
So that's more or less it for our hands-on review of the High Wonder Qubit self-balancing robot using the BBC Microbit microcontroller. It's my first time learning and picking up one of these boards. I find it to be really cool, especially the fact that it supports so many languages that can help anyone pick up the fundamentals of programming very quickly in a fun way. And you have lots of different DIY projects that you can try out. So be sure to learn more details in the links down below if interested. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Qubit self-balancing mini robot using the micro bit.